Hello and welcome to the City Show. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Krieger. On this week's Recycled Special, we'll get a look inside the Warren County Records Center and hear about their Living History Project. We'll also take a short trip over to the Museum of Spiritual Art to check that out and then hear from Fadi Bukharam from Beirut, Lebanon. He stopped back in Lebanon, Ohio last year to bring a real cedar of Lebanon to plant here in Christmas Tree Park. Enjoy the show. So what's, what's the purpose of the County Records Center? What do you guys do there? So basically we are, uh, we're under the recorder's office and we maintain all of the historical and inactive records for Warren County. Uh, also, if you are looking for anything that is uh, over uh, 75 years or yeah. older, that is a public record, you would be coming to us to be able to get those records. What kind of records uh, do they keep there? So uh, the ones that we have available to the public, uh, we have yeah. the historic um, estates or wills. Okay. Um, that's usually what's used the most. Okay. Uh, genealogists are the people who frequent us uh, the most, so okay. um, usually those, and then we have the historic marriage records going back to 1803. We also have. Um, there it is. Look at that. Yeah, that's a picture, or a video. I'm sorry. We also have the um, historic court records. So for all of the Warren County courts dating back to 1803, and then whenever they began, that's a picture of one of our historic maps, which wow. is still used by people who work for the county um, to see where people own property. And then we also have a small exhibit case in the archives that helps tell the history. That particular one is about Foster's Crossing. Is it is it always that neat looking? <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's amazing how you keep it so well kept. We uh, uh, we run a pretty tight shift on okay. making sure things stay organized. Uh, I mean, as a record center, that's yeah. what we do. We want to make sure people are able to find what they're looking for okay. in terms of their historic records, and then also any of our uh, newer records that are only accessible to uh, county employees. We want to make sure they're able to get the, those as well. So do you get families coming in sometimes to want to check their genealogy also? Yeah. So yeah. I'm the person that helps with public records yeah. requests and helps people do research. Okay. Uh, we've had people from all over the country. One of the things we're going to do next year is we're going to start recording where people are visiting from. Uh, but a lot of people take their own personal time off of work or vacation time and okay. visit the record center. Um, since Warren County is so historic, a lot of people settled here from the East Coast, yeah. directly from the East Coast. So we get a lot of people looking to trace their lineage back to the very beginning of the county okay. and prior. So we do get a lot of people, um, especially families. Yeah, that's so. going to be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah for it you, is as pretty far fun. as getting them excited about their their history and yeah, yeah. I love um, interviewing the people as yeah. it, because people will come in and ask for a specific record, but sometimes that record won't really answer the questions that they're looking yeah. for. So that's one of my favorite parts is asking them about their family and really finding out you know the information that now, they're look, looking look for. Look like a lot of library shelves full of <laughs> records. Is what else is there? Well, so. Um, in terms of what else we have, uh, Jennifer already hit on the, um, we have several of the books, ledger books uh, that go all the way back to 1803. Uh, we also have the commissioner's journals that are out okay. and available to the public. So if you're looking for uh, when a turnpike was created in Warren County, or um, when uh, an old tavern license yeah. um, might be, uh, might have done, like the Golden Lambs Tavern License. Yeah. We have their original tavern license, license in the back. Uh, so those are some other things that are out there that's available to the public. So, so what have you done to bring these records to life? So one of the initiatives that I, um, when I started in 2013 was um, because we are a public institution and part of the government, um, we wanted to get this stuff out to the public. Yeah. So uh, we created, we have created indexes over uh, several, several years and those are now available to the public. Okay. So we have um, three different volumes of the commissioner's indexes. We have clerk of courts uh, indexes that are available. We have manumission records and those images are available yeah. on our uh, indexes. Um, and then uh, Jennifer can talk a little bit more about some of the other public outreach that we've done in order to be more visual. Okay. So I run all of our social media pages and share what projects we're working on on our Facebook page and then we also have a blog. And then um, one of my, the biggest things that I do is I actually go into the classroom and teach students about archives and how they can use the archives okay. uh, for research in school. So that's been a big part of what I've 
been doing. So um, I've been to all of the school districts within Warren County with the exception, I think, of Carlisle. Yeah. So um, usually it's third and fourth graders that I speak to because they're learning about primary and secondary sources. So do you have a background in history? Is that what got you excited about this? Yeah, so Jen yeah. and I both have, um, we have a history undergraduate degree. Okay. And then um, we both have master's degrees wow, in that's, public history. Yeah. That's cool. So, we yeah. actually went to school at the same schools <laughs> But as far as we know, we both went to Miami in undergrad, um, but we don't remember having classes together. And then uh, she's- Is that because it's like a wild party school? Remember <laughs> what? Is there another, <laughs> another story that to that? Because we it can't has talk a... about that here, but that's interesting. <laughs> we were in different directions of our history <laughs> of right. uh, classes, but, um, and then she started, um, uh, she did her graduate school later than I did. Yeah. And so, um, that's why we weren't in grad school together. Yeah, but that's yeah. what, what a neat track. I would think history, you're, you're, you're going to teach. And, right. and yet you, you are, but what a, a whole new venue. Right. Uh, there was an old building on 63 that was just uh, an interesting structure, Mary Haven. Uh, and it's no longer there. Uh, do you have any information on that building? So our latest exhibit that is in the, um, it's in the entryway of the administration building at 406 Justice Drive. Um, so this is some of the video taken of that exhibit. What we did with this exhibit is we created a timeline of the building and the changes that happened to that building yeah. from its inception. So that's a picture of Mary Ann Klingling, who is the original person who left money um, to start the children's home. Okay. She passed away in 1867 and one of the things that was included in her will was that she wanted this home to be um, built. So it was completed in 1874 and then um, it was demolished unfortunately in 2012. So we do have some images of the building. Um, there are some images of the inside of the building and the, when they were demolishing it. Wow. And then we were actually able to go to the land where the building was and do some metal detecting, um, which I, you saw the horseshoe and stuff. Yeah. So we found some um, items on the property. Yeah, so, and then it talks a little bit about the community interaction with the children who stayed okay. at the at Mary Haven. Wow. So. Yeah, that's that's some good history. Uh, now, why why would someone in general use the record center? So as Jennifer uh, said, um, if you're trying to find information about your family history, yeah. um, like she said, we have a lot of visitors that come from um, out of town that are trying to um, figure out where their family came from, especially if they knew they came from Warren County. Um, we have a lot of uh, genealogists that come in because they're trying to be, get first families of Warren County. Okay. And so they're trying to tie in um, different relatives that might have placed them here around 1803 or uh, before that, or I think 10 or 20 years after that, so they'd be considered a first family. Um, we also have people who are just generally interested in the buildings of Warren County. So we have, um, like I said, the commissioner's journals have invaluable information of when um, buildings um, were created, yeah. um, who might have commissioned to have the building, like the infirmary um, building that uh, we have, that our um, Health and Human Services building is in, all of the groundwork of when that building was built for the third time is all in the commissioner's building yeah. or commissioner's journals. So there's a lot of wealth of information that you can get from the record center if you're looking for it. I would imagine real estate people would want to have with all the older houses as far as the history and mm -hmm. right. finding out things about the houses. Yeah, uh, well, I actually had a researcher in today looking up her house history yeah. that's on Main yeah. Street. So um, those are a little more difficult to piece together. Um, our historic deeds for the county are located in the county recorder's office because those are still utilized on a daily basis. So um, they actually have the historic deeds up there, but okay. we do get a lot of people looking up their property histories and house histories, trying to figure out when they were built. Now you guys have recently reached out to the community with the uh, capturing oral histories uh, from residents of Warren County. Can you explain what that entails? So we started this program, um, Jen initiated it, and our intent is to gather history about Warren County government specifically. Yeah. Um, in the types of histories that we are hoping to capture, we are interviewing people who have worked for Warren County. So um, people who have spent, you know, maybe at least five years or more with the county um, to tell their story of what it was like to work yeah. for us. You know, things change and if people leave, we kind of lose their history. Okay. I like to use um, 
Pat Grove, who used to work for the Record Center, she was there from the time that the Record Center was created. So her story for our department is invaluable. Yeah. So we're trying to interview um, not just employees, but people retiring from Warren County. And then especially with the Mary Haven exhibit, um, we've been trying to generate interest over people who might have spent time in that building. Um, we are able to piece together the history of the buildings themselves, but to really put together the history of what went on in those buildings, um, as far as Mary Haven, or maybe even the Warren County Infirmary. Um, and then recently, we also did an exhibit on the old Silver Street Jail, and we were able to interview Miriam and Vance Satterthwaite, okay. who were the, one of the last families who lived in the sheriff's residence. So um, what we're really, like I said, just trying to do is capture the living history of mm -hmm. all of Warren County government. So what's the most interesting story you've heard? I mean. Mary Haven <laughs> looks like it was haunted or something. Right. Just, that was a, I know, I know it had a wonderful purpose, but I, I mean, do you hear, do you, do you hear some interesting stories? Yeah. So we, um, I recently over the summer, we interviewed a gentleman named Clyde Baston yeah. and I, he's in his early eighties and he was part of the volunteer, um, sheriff's deputies back in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. And he was full of stories and, um, you can actually access all of our interviews on our YouTube page. So you have him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. his, so, yeah. so make sure you get his yeah. story. He yeah. was definitely our most popular uh, What interview. was his name again? Clyde Baston. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Uh, so how do you arrange an appointment to be recorded? If somebody wants to come and uh, they feel they have something they want to share, uh, so uh, what uh, Jennifer and also uh, one of our uh, archives assistants has been working on is um, just kind of contacting word of mouth okay. uh, over the last couple years. And um, with the Mary Haven exhibit, we've really been able to, we had already ha started to have in in uh, people come and talk to us about yeah. wanting to share their history. Okay. And um, then once we kind of got a good amount of people who were interested, Jennifer and Tori reached out and uh, they just kind of went from there. Nice. And, and how are these recordings going to be used in the future? So these are available to the public. We have them on file at the Record Center and they will be retained permanently. So if you wanted to reach out to us directly, you can use those for research. Um, we've had anywhere, like I said, we interviewed Vance and Miriam Satterthwaite. Yeah. Um, so we've interviewed them, people who work for the Sheriff's Department, um, people who stayed at Mary Haven, mm -hmm. um, and then also um, We've interviewed local lawyers who tried cases that yeah. were interesting to Warren County yeah. government. Um, and then, so really, if you wanted to research any of those, or you can just, like I said, you can go to our YouTube page and I those see. are available. Now, is this a project that families could use for their own history as well? And have you had families contacting you to? So if you're, um, I, I guess a good example of this is if you're trying to get the family history of like say grandma, and she's getting older in age. Um, this is a great way to kind of um, get their history, their stories, because yeah. a lot of people think, well, I don't have anything interesting to say. Well, then you get start to get them to talk and you kind of just let them, kind of let them go. You find that there's a wealth of information wow. that you may not have known about. Um, and I feel like Jennifer um, and Tori have really done a really great way, great job of doing that with the, um, kind of letting the interviewee tell the yeah. story and then you guide them to some of the questions that we want to know, but then they may have things in there yeah. that um, are things that we didn't necessarily ask for. And you can do the same thing with your family um, if, you're, if you're wanting to preserve um, some of that, uh, some of that just uh, invaluable information that uh, may get lost um, if you don't get it from them. And with the technology now, they can just get it on a smartphone and... Yeah have you look at it and say, that's great. And, yes. uh, do you get a lot of stories where you're like, eh, and you have to let them down <laughs> easy? Because everyone probably thinks their story, this story is the uh, best. You know? I'm looking forward to when people are breaking down our door to okay. share their stories with us. So yeah. uh, we've been really pushing that, you know, trying to get people in. Well, that's um, what this is all about, yeah, ladies. Absolutely. Your door is going to be broken down. <laughs> so if you've got, a, you've got a history, you've got a story, you got to get down to Jen and Jen. How do they get a hold of Jen and Jen? <laughs> so you can contact us directly at the Record Center. Um, and I don't know, our phone number is 513-695-1815. Okay. So I'm the person that sets all of that up. 
uh, myself or Tori Roberts. Yeah. So um, you can contact us directly wanna, and we'd be happy to put you on the schedule. I, I want to see some pictures of what their place of work really looks like because there's <laughs> no way, there's no way it can always be that neat because that was like immaculate. Uh, you couldn't see you past my desk yeah. area. <laughs> That's where all the papers are all over <laughs> the place. We always make jokes that uh, our desks are pretty clean, but okay. for us, we start working on something and next thing you know, a clean desk is a non-clean desk, but at least we know the stuff that's out there is, um, we're working on it. Yeah. And so we can, um, we know once it's cleaned and uh, organized, then it gets messed up again, just because yeah. we're always working. So do, do they need an appointment uh, at the record center? Or can they just show up and? So we are open to the public Monday through Friday, eight to 4.30. So you can just show up. Yeah. Or give a call, like Jennifer mm -hmm. said, with our number. That's neat. It seems like you guys have a lot of fun working together. They've been working together for five <laughs> years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's that's neat. Yeah. Excited about going to work. Is there anything else that we need to know that we missed? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, uh, I know a lot of people ask us about our shred days, yeah. um, and I know that they ever we advertise on shred that. days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. So uh, we do them twice a year, and uh, uh, we just had one in October, uh, beginning of October, and we'll do another one in okay. end of uh, April, early um, early May. So if any of anyone who's watching has questions about that, they can reach yeah. out and call the number that uh, Jennifer said. Wow, ladies, thanks thanks for being here and telling us about what you do. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back. Uh, to get into the holiday spirit right after this break. Break your fast food habit at Kelly's Meats and Deli at 1001 West Main Street in Lebanon. Stop in for a quick lunch featuring made-to-order sandwiches, tasty sides, and mouth-watering daily specials. For dinner, Kelly's offers fresh cut steaks, chops, and seafood, plus a variety of prepared dishes that only need to be reheated. You'll also find a large selection of high-quality wine and beer that can make any meal a special event. Kelly's Meats and Deli, open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday. Now open for dinner Saturdays, 6 to 9 p.m. And remember, we cater to... Your hometown source, the Lebanon Channel, is now on YouTube. I know how fortunate I am. Just search City of Lebanon, Ohio to connect with everything that's happening right here. And, and that's going to be an exciting part about this walking tour. Subscribe to receive exclusive local content available only on the Lebanon Channel. Wow, Neil Armstrong's coming to my launch. I was so excited about that. That's the City of Lebanon, Ohio, now on YouTube. That's what makes us so. Uh, Lebanon, Ohio, a great yeah, place buddy. to live. Yeah. An auto accident is a terrible thing to encounter. Oftentimes, people look to getting their car taken care of, but they forget to take care of their body. At Lebanon Chiropractic and Fitness, that's what we do. We take care of your body with chiropractic adjustments, therapeutic massage, and therapeutic exercise. So if you've been involved in a vehicular collision, call our office at 933-9799 so we can take care of the body that counts. Call now to schedule your free initial consultation, 933-9799. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back. If you're not sitting down, I, I think you should because you're about to get knocked off your feet. We're at the Museum of Spiritual Art in Franklin, Ohio, and this place is incredible. It's, it's magical. Thank I mean, you. I just, I walked in before you got here yeah. and I just, I'm tingling. Uh, this is my new friend, Ramesh. Yes. Uh, and, and this is his vision. Uh, and it's it's truly incredible. I mean, Thank I'm you. just yeah. I'm, I'm touched and moved. Now, uh, you came to America, yes, uh, from India. That's right. H how long ago? That will be 1968. 1968. Okay, yes. and you're you're a geologist. That's right. And uh, you work specifically with coal. I bet that's how I started my okay. business. My okay. life was coal. Yes. And, and that's that's how you became successful enough to to fund. That's right. This, to be able yeah. to share this with people? Very true. Yeah. How, how did you discover this passion for this art? Uh, it started off was uh, in 1995. Okay. 
uh, I just started to have uh, uh, some inner awakening yeah. where I start become a patron of art. So start supporting the artists, paying them money to yeah. paint. Okay. David Mueller was one, okay. then I have done with many others. That led to more, and then I met uh, Chuck Marshall. Okay. He has he was a landscape painter. I asked him to work with me and build a, a collection of uh, paintings about the spirituality. Yeah. He didn't know what I'm talking about. So you extended his boundaries. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and he painted all the religions essentially. Wow and they are here, there's about, I think, I don't know, I don't even know how many, yeah. many paintings. Wow. And uh, then many other artists have come along. Okay. And uh, so every year I sponsor the artist. Uh, we had a exhibition of Mother Teresa yeah. two years ago, where about, I think, 10 artists from the worldwide, they each painted Mother Teresa oh, wow. in their own mind, how they see it. Yeah. And we had the exhibition. Then early this year, or last year, I met a young girl, she's Jewish, she's very good, but she was going through a difficult time. Yeah. Her husband has lost a job. At that time, it came to my mind, maybe I should build another series like Mother Teresa. Yeah. And somehow, it came into my mind, Martin Luther King okay. Jr. So I hired her, I'm paying her every month each yeah. painting yeah. and then essentially we'll build up a uh, collection of Martin Luther King. So you, you commission the artist, yeah. uh, you I kind of let them know what, you, do you give them an idea of what you want? I just tell them the theme. Okay. Uh, first time was like Mother Teresa. It was, she touched my soul yeah. when I met her first oh time my in, in you India. met her? Yeah. Wow. I touched her feet and I was blessed and then that changed a lot. Okay. So first exhibition was done with Mother Teresa that has gone to a location at various church have, are taking it to rotation, yeah. exhibition or rotation. Second, I'm looking at Martin Luther King and having his exhibition yeah. travel. Basically, they stay in this place for about a year or so. Okay. After that, they become a traveling exhibition. Okay. And so the uh, people can't come to the museum, but the museum can go to the people. Yeah, nice. And that's what we are trying to taking each faith at a time. Yeah. Like I have been requested, the next one after Martin Luther King is uh, Mandela. Okay. That he changed the life in Africa. So I do not know when I will start that. Yeah, nice. Back to when you first came into the country. That was 68? Yes, right. Did you experience any hardships or challenges, or was it pretty uh, a pretty smooth transition for you? Well, I was like a fish out of the water, yeah. and uh, so I was fumbling like back okay. and forth. Yeah. But I must say that what I am today, it would not be if it was not for people of the United States. Yeah. They gave me the chance, they gave me the opportunity, I came with less than thirty-five, forty-five dollars somewhere around. I don't remember exactly, but I have never taken any money from India or for anywhere. All the money has come from the American people, yeah. so I feel it is my obligation to pay it back. Yeah. Similarly, I'm doing in India. I'm building a school. Oh my goodness! To the children, so I just want to do is before I die. Yeah. Use my success yeah. to leave a legacy behind and pay back to both the countries, India where it gave me the birth, yeah. and America that gave me the opportunity. Wow, I, I mean just the, the building itself, this, this uh, museum is, is spectacular. And then the artwork, I can only imagine like, the cost. Uh, so do you have donors as well that, that assist, or is this all? I, it's is this all, all I you? paid. Wow. I all paid for it. We just get some $5 or so. Yeah. Uh, people donation, no, not yeah. even much donation, just $5, come in. Uh, 
no, I have to fund everything out of my own pocket. I have a little over half a million dollar worth of artwork that I have commissioned. I love and this I guy. This is <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's you've embodied the American dream, except you haven't you haven't uh, been tainted by uh, what some people might call, including myself, the corruption and greed. You're given you're given it back yeah. to touch lives that's and enlighten right. them to see something that's beyond and bigger. Yeah. Uh, than, no, it's than, not beyond and bigger. It is in you. It's in them. Yeah. That's Your good. living spirit is yeah. in you. Well, I'm trying to awaken that. Awaken it. That's beautiful. That's if I awaken beautiful. it, you don't have to depend on the sunlight. Yeah. You will have your own light. Yeah. Wow. Even at night, yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Wow. That is what it is. Yeah. It is getting your inner spirit lightened up. That's okay. what they call enlightenment. Yes. And you see people like uh, Buddha yeah. or Christ. When they show them, they always show a halo around them. Yeah. That is what saying is this soul has been awakened yeah. and living on an inner life, inner spirit, yeah. not the outside light. Wow. That is, that is so like beautiful. if you look at their uh, picture of uh, Guru Nanak, he has a halo behind it. Yeah. And that is what it is. Even when you look up here, even though halo is not there, when the artist was I, painting. When I walked in, th this, this is the first picture that sure. grabbed me. And for me as a Christian, Christian yeah. I, I almost fell to my knees well, uh, you know, it, before this, this, this picture. The main, just, the main purpose of this one was because I have seen many pictures of Christ on the, yeah. on the cross. Yeah. But when you read about Christ, and it said he was beaten up, he was all this. Yeah. But every time you see a picture of Christ, it is like as if yeah. nothing has happened to him. Yeah. So when I worked with uh, Chuck Marshall, we talked about it to show picture of Christ yeah. in truth, where he was beaten up, look at his eyes and everything, and his nails were put into the bones. But to show that he was a son of the God, yeah. The two hands yeah. are coming to pick him up. Yeah. So that's what this is the only place you'll see the God's hands coming in to lift up his own son. Yes, that's, that's powerful. That is, that is what it is. It, it, there's so much power and beauty in this place. We're, we're, we're going to take you on a tour uh, and, and, and look at some of the other okay, rooms sure. and some of the other art too. Sure, let's, okay. let's head over this way. Sure. Yeah. Is more trying to show the Jewish faith, okay? This Jewish faith was is, yeah. here's a rabbi, and this is where he's reading the Torah. The most beautiful part is that it is a star of David right behind yeah. him. That is spectacular. Plus, at the same time, when he's reading it, his eyes and the face, it, what I, when I commissioned this one, my wife is Jewish. Yes. So I gave her the present, original present to her. Oh my. The interesting part is she laughed. She said, on Christmas, you're giving me a present of a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> she said, do you know what you're doing? Oh. I said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had, I want to show you this oh. and the other face. This is the picture you look. It's the Moses. Moses. Yes. This guy is a living person in Mason who rides on a bicycle, very spiritual. So when Chuck got the one, I wanted him to pay, uh, paint the Moses for the Jewish faith. He caught, got him and he became very good friends with him. You'll see him in a couple of paintings here. But he is, to me, whenever I see him on the yeah. street, he is like Moses. Oh my goodness. He just walks Watch in. for this guy in Mason. Yes, yes. <laughs> You could walk so does around. he get does he get a lot of that? Hey Moses, no, no, no okay. We'll buy it. <laughs> but he just yeah no, it's just like there. Then the this is the, another thing wow. is what I found. I was traveling. I travel whenever I travel. I look for artwork which yeah. is related to faith. These three paintings which you see over there, I found them in Israel, and the artist had painted them and he was selling them as a one piece at a time and everything else. When I went there, I said, no, 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 no. What have you painted in these two, pa three paintings? He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know, I just paint, you know, I, I just painted it. I said, do you know what you have done is you have captured nice. 
the faith, yeah. Jewish faith, yeah. because if you look at the first one, you see the person, he is reading the Torah, but his face expresses, he's questioning, is it really true? Yeah. And the second one has now learned, his inner spirit has been awoken, and he starts to read the book. Look, his glasses are up there. He is so focused, and he no longer have any question, yeah. but he is now seeing his wah. Okay? And the third, he's an old man. He's teaching. He's teaching. So the wow. in life one is you learn, you experience, yeah. and then you teach. Wow. I said, you did this thing. This is the most important thing. We didn't part. rehearse that. No, I no, got that. that. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> it good. is the way it is. That's what I, every time is, I do something, it's like the same. Like this painting is, I got it from artists from also Israel, yeah. which he took the newspaper of the old time during the war, yeah. and then he painted on the newspaper, and Rabbi is talking nice. to the lady. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned before uh, the picture of Jesus. You, you commissioned that mm -hmm. person, and, and you went to Israel, yeah. and, and you, you purchased these. Yes. Now you have people from all over the world contacting you, and, and, and then you, you commission the them. So you yes. have artists oh, from I, all I have over the world. Canada. I have uh, from uh, France, two of France. I have it from uh, India. I have it from Australia. I have uh, it from USA. I travel, I find something. Yeah. Every, I show you one thing which was amazing. This painting is the painting of Rabbi, okay? I went to an uh, antique store. Yeah. In the antique store, I found out that Spiegel was a very famous artist who only painted uh, clowns. Yeah. But this was in the antique shop, sitting there, and I said, well, I need to have, he said, why are you so special about this? It's not color, nothing, not clown. I said, you don't realize, he was Jewish, wow. Spiegel, and he painted rabbi, yeah. black and white, yeah. and there is no other painting by him of a rabbi. Oh my. That yeah. one, I know. And you found this in an I antique I found store. in an antique shop. Wow. I found several I'm going to look a little closer now <laughs> when I go antique. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It goodness. is amazing. People have just given it away. They yeah. have no idea. But it is a history. Wow. And it is a history. To me, this is the most beautiful piece you could have for a person who paints cartoons. Yeah. Uh, not cartoon, but the um, clowns. Yeah. But he, because of his faith, he did paint. Yeah. And, but it was never recognized by anyone. It was in the antique shop for nothing. Now, you, you mentioned earlier, we came from the room with uh, the Christianity, we had mm. Martin Luther King, we had Jesus. Now we're in the, the tribute to, to he Hebrews and Jewish. Yes, yes. Uh, your wife he, is it, Jewish. Is Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about yourself? Are, are you on a spiritual quest yourself? And where, where would you say you're at? Or how would I you am, identify yourself? I am. I am basically saying is just like electricity or yeah. just like water. Yeah. I will say more like water. Water you could put in there, uh, the um, say liquor. Yeah. Then it becomes scotch. You drink scotch. Yeah. But sometimes you put orange juice with the water. But you drink all the time. But you're drinking like it is your favorite drink. Okay. But if faith is the same way, it is your favorite faith, but underlying it is all water. Yeah. And I am trying to be a water, not a drink. Yeah. I don't, doesn't matter I drink Coca-Cola, whether I drink scotch, yeah. whether I always look at it as I am drinking water. Yeah. And that is the, so in my faith is look for foundation. Yeah. When I look at like a river, mm. people see as a river and water, and I look at it as, this, there's a God in there. Yeah. He's the one who created it. So I am just go one step beyond. Yeah. Because that is what I want to be. That's what is my faith. That my faith is absolute truth, ultimate truth. Yeah. If I could find that and capture it, I reached it. Yeah. So you've kind of come from being a geologist and come into a calling. Yes, to help it is my calling. Lead other people That's right. to their journey That's right. of discovering yeah. it what's, is my in, what's inside of that. That's right. 
What a what a great way to do it with all this beautiful Appreciate art. Concept. Let's go look at some more okay. and explore some other rooms. Sure. Come on with us. So now we're in a room that uh, is all about the Hindu faith. It's a okay. Sikh. A Sikh. It's a Sikh. Forgive it's me. It's an offshoot of Hinduism. Yeah. Okay. And this Sikh faith is actually very similar to the faith called Zoroastrian. Okay. They were the faith in Persia. They before uh, Muhammad, and so but they practiced. So this is took the teachings on both sides. On now this, you mentioned something about the turban, yes. and the beard, and yeah. how the Sikh faith, the Sikh faith brings both Muslims yeah. and Hindus into one. Okay, can we can we look at this and see yeah. how that illustrates? Does that that's, illustrate? Yeah, that's that? illustrates. The on the top, the turban is a Hindu faith wise. Muslims have big beard. They put it together. They're worshiping there to a Hindu temple. This, but in, in this whole thing, faith was created was to fight against the Britishers. Yeah. And that is why Britishers never ever won the mm -hmm. war against the Sikh. Yeah. As long as they ruled. Yeah. Wow. But they were the very most powerful people. They had the ultimate faith. Yeah. And that is where, and they basically worship the book, holy book. Okay. okay. And they don't have any idols, nothing. Okay. Just, and that's why he changed. And this is an illustration of their temple? That's right. That's the temple. Is Everybody goes there. And where, where is that? That's in Amritsar in India. Okay. It's interesting is that this, when Chuck Marshall uh, was painting this, I had no idea I was in India. Yeah. So one of the Indian priests took me inside and when I came out, I called Chuck. Wow. I said, Chuck, you'll never believe I went to the temple, holy temple, and somebody took me to right next to the holy Bible. So book. did you did you send him down here to, no, to get no. this, or did he get a picture? But you would know, he had seen the picture. Okay. I told him to do something. Oh my! He said, Ramesh, you'll never believe me. Yeah. I said, What? He said, I just finished painting the temple. Wow! I said, What? <laughs> and he says, Ramesh, it give me a goosebumps. Oh my! That you just went there, and I am painting it. Yeah. And I have never been there. Yeah. So he painted this painting, it's just about most beautiful one. This is a replica or there's a copy of it because my son has original. That's, he that's, just does not want to part amazing. with that. Hey, you know what? We could spend all day that's right. looking at all these rooms, but I want to make sure our viewers get to know about this spectacular sure. museum. So what, what's the address? Where are we in Franklin? We I know we're right the, along the river. Yeah, it's a Franklin uh downtown okay when you look outside you enjoy the water it's it's that. very serene and this yeah. build was built in 1850 60 something yeah. like that yeah. and uh, it has the most beautiful culture all every room has a fireplace and has a ambient it's about close to i think 6500 square feet now, now the museum is open from during the week monday through yeah. friday from yeah. nine until nine up to five nine till That's five right. Now, I'm going to take you out of this just for a second because you also support the arts in another way, the Mason uh, Theater Group, correct? That's right, yes. Uh, and that's right right in Lebanon. So if, if you don't want to drive out to Franklin just yet, the Mason uh, Theater yeah, Group yeah. is right on 42. Two. And uh, it's a support, I support yeah. the uh, art theater. Basically, I want to support everything to do with the art. Yeah. So I support the, uh, the, the Theater 42 and ha helping them to expand, make it bigger. It's yeah. on a 40 acres, of la 20 acres of yeah. land. Wow. Then I also have bought a church and converted that into a Harmony Center where okay. the people can play. And that's in Franklin, that's yeah, right Franklin, down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I also now started the Academy of Art yeah. and um, he, he's doing a great job. Yeah. Tim Langenhorst, so he just and he teaches art classes here. Right, yeah. I, I think Monday and Wednesday in the in the academy in the academy. Yeah, okay, so that's an academy. Wow. They're all is set up. Well, we'll have here. to we'll have to get out there and take a sure, look at right. that. Did I miss anything? I know there's lots more that we need oh, to yeah. see, uh, but I, I'll tell you this: this has just been a a, a joy, yeah. man. I, 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 I feel like I've just made a new friend. <laughs> Yeah, I did too. Yeah, thank you so much, Ramesh. Yes, Thanks for pleasure. being on the show. You got to get down here to Franklin. You'll thank be, you. you'll be. You are all there. welcome. Anybody wants to come, just please let us know. We'll make sure you get a chance to see everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Bob Pulte Chevrolet always gives you the best. Best price, guaranteed. Best trade-in value. Best selection. Best financing on all new and pre-owned vehicles. Just 20 minutes from Cincinnati or Dayton in Lebanon, Ohio. And you'll love the Pulte price. Since 1954, Hardy's Interiors has been providing quality furnishings for homes in and around Lebanon, Ohio. Today, you'll still find quality antique and vintage furniture along with new Made in America furniture of all styles. At Hardy's, you can create a mix of furniture and accessories that truly reflects your personality. All made to last a lifetime. Designers are welcome and so are you. Hardy's Interiors at 208 and a half Wright Avenue or online at hardysinteriors.com. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Credit challenge, no problem. Here at Pop Pulte Chevrolet, get approved on a new Chevrolet with financing as low as 9.9% plus $2,000 in rebates. Don't waste time shopping elsewhere. Apply online today at BobPulte.com. And you'll love the Pulte price. Hey, we're back, and so is Fadi Bukram. Uh, you might remember him. He's the uh, photographer who traveled out here from Beirut, Lebanon, to travel the United States in early 2017 checking in on seven different cities named Lebanon in the country, and he came back this year to do the same trip in reverse uh, and give the seven original cities who made the trip to Lebanon in 1955 an authentic cedar of Lebanon tree. Let's take a look. started this trip in San Francisco just like I did the last time. I always start from San Francisco because when I went to grad school, this is where I went, and this is where my family lives. My family, I mean my aunt and my cousin, so I saved my aunt preparing for the trip and then I move. But the difference this time is that instead of going north and then heading east, this time I headed south and then headed east. So I'm doing the trip in reverse this time. So, Despite what happened as you exited the last time you were here, <laughs> you, you were willing to come back? Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, so despite what happened last time, so I guess I should describe a little bit what happened. So last time after I was in Ohio and I left and continued my trip, uh, I went to New Mexico, to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And one day before having to go back to return the RV, it was a rental, and I was returning it to Seattle, uh, it got stolen in Albuquerque by a mother-daughter team of meth heads. <laughs> they were trying to convert my RV into a meth lab and the cops caught them right in the middle of it. So, but it took a day and a half to get my stuff back and I'm so lucky that I even got my stuff back. But the RV itself had to stay where it is because it was pretty much destroyed on the inside. And, but did that change anything for me? I mean, no, it could have happened anywhere. So. <laughs> Why would I not come back? So last time, one of the one of the what do you call objectives of the trip was to see the cedar trees that were brought from Lebanon, my country, in 1955 to seven towns called Lebanon in the in the United States. So I was able to find some of them, and the only real cedar was actually in here in Lebanon, Ohio, and. I got asked by a few mayors from other towns if it was possible to bring back cedar trees, real cedar trees, to here. And I thought about it, and last year I thought, okay, maybe that'll be the purpose of my new trip. I'm not going to visit all the 40-something Lebanons 
in here. I'm just going to visit a select few where I'd be able to plant a cedar tree. And you know, it's, it's exciting. And I, you know, when I first met you and the, and the energy and the excitement that you had was just, it was wonderful. Thank you. And um, to be able to see you again and to have you be a part of that and to have this wonderful tree. And as we sit here, you know, here's what I say about the rain. I love the rain. It's just letting things grow and it'll allow that beautiful tree to grow and to be, to be a part of our, um, what we call our Christmas tree park which is awesome. We, we love this park and um, so many things take place here and events take place and it's a wonderful green space and so the tree will just be a perfect fit. I really have to say thank you. To, I mean, thank you and Mickey. I mean, thank you everybody for the welcome that I've had here. I remember that last year, you know, I didn't know anyone right. but Mickey and she introduced me to everyone here and you know, they invited me to speak at the at the Rotary <laughs> Club, and it's just I'm I'm losing words for the you know amount of positive things that I feel like I have to say not I have to say like I feel I need to say, but in short, just thank you so very much. Welcome. I mean, I'm you know I'm humbled by all of this, so thank you so much. So. And we are humbled as well. So it's oh, no. that that makes for <laughs> such a great relationship and a partnership Thank you. from far away it brings us uh, closer together. Thank you. You're Thank welcome you so in Lebanon, much. Ohio anytime. Thank you anytime. So much, Mickey. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So here we go. Sure. There you go. So I do you like that? I love that. <laughs> Thank you. And it will be proudly um, planted in our uh, Christmas tree park. I, I would hope that maybe we could even do some type of plaque or something that would that identify would. exactly where this came from and uh, yeah, that, that yeah oh, and do that and that would I be really that, wonderful right? so when people come yeah. and, and take a look at it uh, they they can they can know the story as well great so thank you very very much thank you thank you <laughs> see it took a few months after i came back home that i started to realize how much the first trip has changed me in that you know, I was on the road for five months. You meet a lot of people. And for the most part, and I'm saying like the absolute majority of the time, I only met the nicest of people from all walks of life, everything. So what changed, and it's a little bit, a little bit I guess, sensitive talking about it right now, but it used to be that I used to get my information about things from the news. Now I don't do that as much anymore. Why? It's not because I don't trust the news as much as the news and the media are, they're built to tell you about the bad things that are happening in the world. That's what they do. I just don't buy that the world is in such an awful place as it is. Better to see it for yourself. Yeah, you I mean, your own yeah, but I, I also know that I've had the privilege of actually being able to do that, whereas not everyone can do that, you know, drive around the country and see for themselves. But I guess if I want to take something out of it is that people shouldn't base their opinion of the world based on the news and that they should remember that there's a lot of good stuff happening even though they don't see it. Wow, what a wonderful young man, an ambassador. Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that's really cool. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. You told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? 
He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pellet wait? Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. made her college years possible. Opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Well, that's it for this edition of The City Show. We'll be back live with you early May, hopefully, but that all depends on how Ohio is impacted by the coronavirus. Here is hoping that you are well and that our city is ready to get back to work. Stay safe. God's got a plan for this, and we're going to come out better and stronger.